Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 of the auction hunting series with me, Kev the reseller. So I am Kev and I am a reseller. I buy things at charity shops, car boot sales, auctions and that is precisely what I'm doing in this series. Buying items at auction that I believe I can sell online again to make a profit. That is what I do, that is my business and that is what this series is completely focused on. Now in this episode, I spend the most I have spent in any month so far. So there's a lot of purchases, but also a lot of sales. So get yourself a cuppa, sit back, and let's get stuck in to episode three. We are gonna get stuck straight into some sales because I said on the last video that I had sold one thing that went just after the cutoff of video two, but actually I've sold two things now. So it's Monday the 20th of November. Got a couple of sales to show you. Let me show you what they are. So first one was this uh, Robert Campin print that I showed you when I bought those Egyptian figures. There were a couple of pictures included. This was one of them. Cool kind of deep frame there. But yeah, that has sold for $34.99. So that's pretty much what I paid for that whole lot. Haven't really had that much interest in the Egyptian figures yet. So might be reducing the price on those. Try and get those shifted soon. And again, I think I did kind of show this a little bit. What was this? I think in the first one now, the first episode. Um, it was boxed. A Lubitel 166U. Very, very nice condition that. Sent an offer out and that has sold for £50.99. pence. So not a bad start to this month. Oh, look at this. I'm actually at an auction. Would you believe it? I have bought some items at an auction. Feels like quite a little while since I have. Um, and I'm here now to pick them up. Have had a few more sales as well, so I'll quickly just show you those. We sold one of the lampshades, £14.24. Not really anything to write home about. It cost me six quid to send it as well, so it was pretty battered. So probably would have been worthwhile not really listing that. But it's a few quid in the bank. Um, the Olympus Mew camera, which was on my first ever auction pickup, I believe. That sold for £64.99. And one more on the auctions. We had the Nivico JVC solid state radio. Really, really nice sale there. $89.99 off back to Japan. So they were a few nice sales that have happened in the little period since I last saw you. And uh, we are going to head into the auction house now, pay for the goods, and I'll show you what we bought. So this is what I got today. 725 was the Technics SL5 direct drive turntable so we've got that one there it's to be in very nice condition obviously got to test it I paid 35 on the hammer plus eight pound 40 fees then an apple mac one megabyte macintosh plus i mean look at that for retro i mean and my whole hand fits on the screen there that is that is cool but that should be about 100 pounds spares and repairs at least if not working that was 28 pounds on the hammer plus 672 i've got this reel to reel player here this Tanberg reel to reel again even spares to repairs should be some pretty good money but this is looking in very nice condition obviously the, uh, the lid has seen slightly better days don't really know why all that tape is on there that was 35 on the hammer as well plus 840 and then this I pretty much wanted it for this the others I mean I can maybe stick some batteries in these see how these get on um, they could maybe sell all right but this is obviously uh, what I wanted it for. I paid £16 plus £3.84 for the whole box. And this, let me open it up and I'll show you. So here we go, here it is up now. It's got the original Rockstar sticker. It's got the booklets, or poster kind of fold out booklets. The booklet, and then obviously all three. We've got GTA, GTA London missions, and GTA 2. I think that might be a, the other way around, obviously that's GTA 2. But yeah, really, really nice condition. The case is very, very nice as well. So yeah, really, really chuffed to find that. Always cool to find some uh, retro gaming pieces. But yeah, 16 pound on the hammer, 384 fees. And yeah, hopefully in this condition, might be able to see about 50 quid back for that. I need to see if I'll get anything at all for that, but it was worth it just for this alone. I mean, that was just such an iconic game back in the day. I had a demo of that on the PC. I don't know, let me know if anyone else had that. I think you could play about five minutes, but it counted down in seconds, I'm sure, at the top. So you used to get in your bulldog car, drive around a bit. Um, I always used to go down, down over the bridge into the little 
road on the right and go and get the cozy and then just basically joyride that <laughs> around the city but yeah really really iconic game definitely so yeah chuffed to have that in my hands for a little bit before i move it on well there we go we do have power on the apple mac i don't know why it runs this line down that isn't how it looks it is a solid gray screen there so it's all powered up nicely paid what was that 30 34 pounds and 72 pence in total for that and i believe i should be able to ask about 150 even without the keyboard and mouse in working powered on condition like that i had a little look this up it came out in january i think it was 1986 and it was over two and a half thousand dollars to buy in 86 so yeah serious bit of equipment back in its day but obviously now i guess it's a collector's piece but yeah nice find saturday morning and we are at an auction this is where my auction journey started probably 11 12 years ago so when i started reselling auctions is where i started so not many do i think obviously car boot sales charity shops where a lot of people tend to start but for me it was auctions pick stuff up here on a saturday morning used to go home put it on an ebay seven day auction whatever it went for the following week i used that money to reinvest again and i came back here these auctions ran every week back then now they're only once a month first saturday of every month is when these are run and i haven't been here in probably seven eight months so i'm not too sure really what to expect with the current climate of how this auction is but you know that's all part of the fun i've got my catalogue in my pocket you can print these I used to print these back in the day. I've got a pen. I'll have a little walk around and look in there. It's a really old school auction. So this is not on the internet. No online bidding or anything like that. You're in the room. You're bidding. So hopefully we'll get some footage of that if I bid on anything. Hopefully it doesn't all go for mega prices and I'm priced out. But it looks quiet here at the moment. But I'm about an hour early to get in there and do some viewing. So yeah, let's go and have a look at what's in there. I'm excited. It's a real old school place this. It's a cattle market as well. They have an outside auction don't tend to buy much from there historically but we'll have a peek find all kinds of stuff here on a Christmas tree but yeah it's uh, outdoor stuff it's uh, obviously not always the greatest quality but you can find some some gems every now and then we are interested in what is in here So, as you saw in the video there, I have got two Barber Beedale jackets, wax cotton, very, very nice um, Barber tartan inside. One of those, uh, that is the men's XL, I think, and then a ladies size 12. Again, very, very nice condition. So, really chuffed with them. I paid 20 for the first and 32 for the second. And then we also got this Harris Tweed blazer. It's actually got, if I did notice, the little, uh, little booklet in there. So I'm thinking this is probably pretty fresh. I don't know if it's unworn, but it's certainly not been worn a great deal, I don't reckon. 
And then the last one is this Lavenir. Again, 100% wax cotton jacket. They were near the same kind of value, but it was going for a fiver and no one was bidding on it. So I took it for a fiver as well. It's uh, certainly got a few more signs of age to it, but I think that'll do all right as well. They're certainly gonna make some money on that. I've also got a board game lot, so I'm gonna go grab that now. And then this is the board game lot that I managed to get. Shelf of board games, five pounds. So very, very chuffed with that for the main reason that I've sold this game before, Callisto, and this goes for like 25, 30 quid. So I knew that's why I wanted this bundle. I haven't really looked into any of the others. This will do well as a family game. That looks quite good fun. So we'll be playing that in the house. Sometimes I know these uh, Piatnik card games can go all right. So um, yeah, we'll have a little look through these and see if any of them are worth anything. And obviously this is a very, very, classic uh, reseller item but I'm almost certain it will not have the Tyson or the centre cards in but let's have a look. I moved into the car um, to do this bit in an attempt to slightly warm up because I don't know if you can see there it is minus 0 0.5 and I can't really feel my toes right now. So I've opened this up and what do you reckon? Are the cards in there? Yes they are albeit a few years too late now but there was once upon a time where these were fetching some pretty ridiculous money these cards and they are they're nice like the centering's good on them they're very very crisp so um i don't really think they're worth a great deal anymore but i'm chuffed that i've finally owned them to be fair so yeah that was a nice lot for a fiver there so the good thing about this auction is you can pay for the lots that you've bought so far go in there grab them take them to the car while the auction's still going on and then head back in start bidding again if you want because it's all on on your number so that is what i have done and what i'm going to do i've picked up these lots that i purchased and there's still a few yeah probably at least maybe four or five i think that i'm interested in bidding on um i've already not won like those dreamcast games for example they were they were decent but they went for good money there was a couple of young guys there that clearly knew what they were doing with those and um, obviously i'm there to make a profit <clears throat> Um, potentially they're collectors because they're in very nice condition but I'm gonna head back in now and we'll see if we can win some more stuff right I'm heading back to the car now there are a few lots that uh, I did want to bid on still but it's taking a bit too long and uh, we're hitting midday now and I want to get home and spend some time with the family for the weekend so I don't want to be here all morning and afternoon oh, so but I've got some nice stuff so I'm happy with what I've grabbed for a, a few hours being down here and then i'm gonna get back yeah have a little look into a few of the other bits and pieces get these jackets listed and fingers crossed show you some sales of which i have had a couple so let me just grab my phone and i'll give a little update on a couple of sales i've had as well right so the only slight issue with doing these videos over a month is that it's quite hard sometimes to remember what the last sale is that i updated you on so i can't update you now because it's pointless me going over the same product so i'm going to go home i'll um i'll watch the video see where we're at and we'll catch up with some sales before but we have sold some things so i have updated with my sales now i know what i have sold since the last time i just mentioned it and there's quite a few to be honest so the first one that went through was the grand theft auto collector's edition that i picked up at that auction it sold within i can't remember if it was one day but it was definitely two days and that sold on an offer for 45 pounds and 59 pence i think i paid 16 pound for that whole box i actually haven't listed anything else yet or got around to checking out those little handheld things so already into profit on that lot so that was a nice sale we then had a barometer sell that was from the big clock bundle that i got i think in the first auction maybe the second and that sold for 39.99 some binoculars from i think that same bundle 11 pounds 24 now since that auction it's been a few days since i said i'm going to check what my sales are now i've actually had a sale from that auction so i bought the harris tweed jacket and i bought a few of the barber jackets or two barber jackets the harris tweed jacket sold the very next day within the listing and that sold for 50 pounds so really strong price on that one and we have had a couple more sales so one was a clock the frodsham clock nice wooden one this is pretty much that clock bundle gone now got some really really nice profit off that bundle paid what i think about 20 quid for that whole bundle and yeah this one sold for 39.99 as well as all of those other clocks that have gone before it so yeah really nice bundle that was with the clocks 
And another sale that we had is the Apple Mac. So that has sold for $169.99. Really, really top sale there. Did actually get an offer for this for £110, I think maybe one or two days before, um, which I, I counted at $155 actually, but then sold the very next day for $169.99. So, you know, don't be uh, don't be listening to those low ball offers. Not really worth it. If you've got a price in mind, try your best to stick to it and the sales will come as proven on this one. So yeah, really, really good, good sale on that one as well. So one thing I forgot to say in that previous clip there is that this now puts us up to just a shade over £973 in profit um, since the auction series began. But, and it's a pretty big but, I am about to absolutely decimate that profit by what I have purchased in the auction over the past couple of days. It was a two-day auction, bought one lot on the first day could have probably bought more but i was out so i left some bids and only one thing won and then yesterday i was at home and i was watching the, the auction and i was bidding live and there were some really really great things first time i've ever bought at this auction so i don't think it'll be the last i'm going to drive there now about five minutes around the corner i've already popped in i've made payment and they said i can park around the back to load up the bits and i will show you i'm very excited about the bits i've got so yeah let's go get them so on the first day I bought this this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex demo record King of the Rumbling Spires from 1969 now Tyrannosaurus Rex are who then became T-Rex Mark Bolan in my opinion a massively underappreciated British band obviously he died very very young still has some great records that people will know but they don't really seem to get huge appreciation but I paid £120 for this but I've seen these go for £400 plus. So I will put a, some screenshots up of, of those sales. But there's nothing on eBay. There's nothing on Discogs. So hopefully I can command my kind of my own price on that. That's the theory. So you're really, really chuffed to just own this for a little while. But yeah, and also to see what kind of money I can get for that. So a really nice first buy on the first day. And then yesterday, the second day, I bought these. I bought how many in total? Five lots, I believe. One, two, three, four, five lots of these um, Royal Franklin Danbury Mint cars. Now, which one's going to be the easiest? Here we go. I think I'll be able to get this one out without much, too much issue. Now, they are all in fantastic condition. Clearly, from somebody who looked after them, you know, and uh, collected them and probably displayed them. They've all got their um, what would you call it? Um, what's that called? A certificate with them. Let's pop this open. Let's pop the hood. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Um, but yeah, so in total, I'm not going to total this up. I'll pop a screenshot on maybe. Um, but I believe it's probably going to be in the region of two to two hundred and fifty pounds but not just for this box because it's this box now this box was a fair bit cheaper because most of these cars are quite badly damaged i think i paid 40 for all of these but um this one is just that wheel which can probably be fixed because you know that's a decent vehicle and i don't think there's any damage on this one otherwise there's a few little niggly bits to the others then we got another box here um again all with their certificates Looking very, very nice. And another box full. Again with all their certificates. Looking very, very, very nice. Loads of them in there. And one final box full. Again, all cars, all certificates. Lovely. Need to obviously get these photographed nice and quickly, get these listed, start getting some money back coming in for these cars. Last thing I bought is a collection of watches some really nice watches in here so we've got quite a few citizen eco drive there's i think they've got some pretty bad reflections here but yeah um i haven't checked out this breeze or this genova one yet a couple of accurists not particularly valuable but the casio will be worth a little bit the citizen eco drive that could be worth three to four hundred um a couple of g-shocks and these Citizen Eco Drives as well. And I've got the boxes for, I believe, almost every single one, definitely the Citizens. And in here, 
in there, the co this collection was well looked after. You've got um, printouts with the serial number, all the little booklets and everything to go with them. So a really nice collection. I paid £200 on the hammer for this. So a pretty significant investment, but I do believe we could be at least trebling that investment back. So I'm going to do some good bit of research into these and get these listed ASAP to get some money back. So I just thought I'd quickly show you while I'm doing these. <clears throat> Apologies about my voice. Suddenly got a really sore throat all of a sudden. But they are such nice condition. Um, all boxed. The guarantees are with them all. Most of them even have their original bill of purchase. So £300 this watch was at the time. I actually think I could probably get a bit more for this now. But while I was doing it, I just thought, you know, they're not perfect. They're obviously a bit dirty from wear. Um, but just wanted to give a special mention out to this stuff because it is amazing. It just cleans things so nicely. So that there, which is a bit grimy, obviously, it was exactly the same on, on this side. And that's all cleaned up really, really nicely. So I'm just going to give this a quick clean now and I'll show you what it looks like after I've given it a rub down with this elbow grease. And there we go. Looking rather shiny and sharp now. Again, it was similar around the bezel <clears throat> there was some kind of little bit of grime and marking but now that is looking rather spanking and uh, looking forward to getting these listed I've already taken a photo of quite a few of them uh, getting these citizen eco drive ones photographed and listed first but yeah really really looking forward hopefully get them listed and maybe someone will cop them for a, a Christmas present let's uh, let's wait and see how it goes quick little example of the condition of some of these cars so they all have the certificate with them and you know some of them are absolutely minty fresh i really do like these models they are very cool obviously all the doors open you know actual when you turn turn the wheels steering wheel moves as well pretty cool you can open the trunk all the bits and pieces in there but um, yeah, some of them are absolutely mint. Others aren't. Like I've, uh, I've organised them over here. So I've just photographed these three. And all of these are pretty good. So we've got these good ones. We've got these good ones. They're all good. And they're all good. And then these ones are a bit too damaged that I'm just not really going to bother. So, you know, the windscreen is kind of snapped off. Quite a few of them it's the windscreen so it's as if when they've been stored at some point they've been stored on top of each other and it's kind of crushed them which is a shame because that tends to be the damage on on most of them um so these are i'm probably going to box these up maybe take them to a boot sale um not sure or maybe sell as a bundle lot damaged vehicles you know for someone who wants to repair them or whatever but you know there is quite a lot of money in here that one <clears throat> that was in here, for example, the cheapest you can buy this on the internet at the moment, I think is about 130 pounds is what someone's asking for these. Obviously these are unboxed, so I don't have the box, but you know, there's gonna be a, a considerable amount in quite a few of these cars. So yeah, look forward to seeing how these go over the series. So I just remembered that I said I was gonna show you me packaging the Apple Mac um, and then I got with the bubble and then I remembered so I buy these double wall boxes obviously I try and use as many recycled boxes as I can but sometimes you know it's handy to have some decent quality boxes so they're fairly big they will fit this in nicely and then I also use craft paper again I buy this but it goes quite a long way I buy all of this from a, uh, a supplier you know packaging supplier wholesaler so I have a pretty good rate with them. We agreed that quite some time ago and it's it's never gone up in the time that I've been with them. So I buy my bubble there, I buy that, I buy the boxes, buy uh, mailing bags, buy poly mailers, all, all that kind of stuff. But obviously I wanna make sure that the front of this is nice and well bubbled. And then you just pack it out with so much of this stuff with the double wall boxes, it should be good to go pack it out nicely at the bottom with some of the craft paper slide this into the box as so 
cram in another layer all around the sides. That is not moving an inch. And then another juicy layer on top. Now obviously, I could fill it all the way to the top, but I prefer to just give it a little cut on these corners and then just compact it down. Because uh, to be honest, one, it saves on how much craft paper you have to use. And two, it just means that it's packed in there just that little bit more sturdily, if you like. Onto there. Run this is going to create that little foldable line. Now we'll run down like that. All the way down there. Fold it over. And one more on this side. Look at that for an angle. Look at that. Push it down. And there we go. Let's get this thing taped up. All taped up and good to go. That should be getting there in one piece without any issues. And what is that in the background? Is this the real to real player I hear you ask? Yes, it is. That is the real to real player that I purchased at the auction a little while ago. Um, I, I think I picked it up last Tuesday and it was just sitting there for the week. Don't ask me why, because obviously a bit silly to have stock sitting there, then you should be getting it photographed and getting it listed, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Um, I think I cleaned the lid because there was some tape all over it, and then I kind of left it settle, and then I realized that actually I'm probably going to scratch it if I attempt any more to get it off. But on Saturday morning, I thought, you know what, let's get it listed. So I got it photographed in the morning, got it listed later that day, and it sold the very next day for £150. So little tip there, if you've got stock, it's not going to sell sitting on the floor so yeah that's gone for 150 pounds i paid what 30 odd pounds i think on the hammer for that so two nice big heavy bulky sales there and we have got one more sale so let me show you this as well so i sorted all of these cars out now so i've got these to photograph these to put these are like are all good ones these are the kind of somewhat damaged ones so there is a few actually more than i thought but they can still go for about 10 to 15 quid even as spares and people obviously repair them. Um, I've got all of these still to photograph and these to photograph. Those are photographed and listed. There's quite a few watches on them already actually, so that's nice. But what I want to show you should be over here. And it is this board game, which is the one that I told you in the Saturday morning auction that I picked up. This is the game that I actually wanted. I've sold this in the past. I think I said 25 to 30, but I actually listed it for 35 pounds and it has gone for 32.49 or something like that on offer. So really good price for that. Bearing in mind, I paid a fiver for that whole bundle on the auction there. Now you may be thinking, this weighs a ton, it's gonna cost him a fortune to send, he hasn't even charged any postage, but it weighs eight and a half kilo and Royal Mail, Providing it is under 10 kilo, so five to 10, medium parcel, less than 61 centimeters, which is most, you can actually send it for 5.99. I will send it on a track 48 for another 30 pence, but six pound 29 for a 169.99 order, I think you'll agree, is not a bad price. So then guys, we are almost reaching the end of episode three on the auction hunting series. But before I get down to the numbers, I did have a few more sales. Let me show you what they are. First of the watches to go was the Casio gold little number there. That's gone for $18.99. It did have a few little blemishes to the bezel, which affected the price a little bit. So yeah, not the most expensive watch to go out of that bundle, but the first one. And the first car to go from the car bundle was a pretty nice one, the Ford Thunderbird. That went for $49.99, so a really good start to the cars that were heading out. And then we sold the Technics SL5 turntable. That sold for $129.99. So this becomes the first auction that I have been to within the month that I have sold every single item and profited from in the month as well. So I bought the Apple Mac, the Tamburg Reel to Reel, the Technics turntable and that bundle of games. And if we include the GTA selling 
as the profit on that. I know I've still got some other bits here, which I still not got round to testing and listing, but the other three items, they all sold because they were single items. So four items sold out, four items purchased. Really, really uh, top on that one. And now we can move into the little bits that I have picked today, which will be the final sales of this episode. So ignore the bits in the back there. They are just things that I've also picked to sell today, or pack today that I've sold. But we got another car gone. So we've got this Ford Model T, pretty cool one this. You know, a little uh, kind of pickup truck. You know, the roof pops off, all that kind of jazz. That sold on and off for £33.24. And then another car, a Ford Fairlane. I think that was what it was called, yeah? Fairlane 500 Skyliner. This was really nice, actually. Let's see if I can show you what happens here. I can't remember how you do it. Oh, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> but basically, I think if, you, if I lift it upside down, it becomes a bit easier. There we go. So... It's one of those like retractable roofs that pops up. This is really hard with one hand. I think, do you know what? Let me pause and let me sort it out and I'll show you. Uh, there you go. So it's a retractable roof that kind of pops up. And again, I might be able to do it. It's a little bit easier to put it down. So you can see this pops up, the roof pops in, that folds down into there. That also then folds down this back out and down there again how cool is that so that has gone on and off for 45 pounds so yeah really really nice sale that one pretty pleasing to see that they are heading starting to head out quite quickly is um obviously a lot of money tied up in those there's a lot of them but they're all photographed now with the exception of the slightly damaged ones i haven't done those yet but the ones that are all in good condition have been photographed and are listed and there are a lot of watches i got some offers again today but I'm not interested in taking you know really low offers so i've countered back but we shall see then yeah, we also sold this t-rex christmas record it's kind of like a a soft foldy vinyl um gave that a test play as well it sounded really good i'm not even sure if i spoke about this when i picked up the record because i was so excited by the other one this was also part of the bundle nothing mega money but that has gone for 14.99 and then the second watch to go. So the first of the Citizen Eco Drives. This is one that didn't actually have a box. So all the others had a box. This is the only unboxed one. But again, did have its original bill of sale. Someone paid £108 for it when they purchased it back in, I think it was 2015, was it? Yeah, there we go, 2015. And that one has sold for £89.99. That isn't the date. I haven't said it. Oh, we've just got a cha-ching. We sold uh, a child's jacket, a youth boy's large, one of those camo jackets. Nothing to do with the auction hunting, so we can forget about that one. So there we are. I am going to call it an end to the month now. We are sitting on the 15th of December. This is Friday. The video should hopefully be going out tonight. And yeah, we're going to call it a day on this episode. So let's get stuck into the numbers. Actually, before I do, a couple of little bits to get in. In episode two, when I gave that final profit figure, it wasn't quite accurate. It actually was the figure that I had made in month two, not the total. Basically, I had forgotten to include the slight loss that we'd had on month one of £8.81. So it's not a huge amount out, but it was out. And I just thought I would make that clear there. You may also remember that I purchased a PC and a monitor in the beginning of episode two. Now we have decided to keep that PC for our daughter. So that will be removed as a cost in this series. Um, it's a personal cost now, not a business cost and this auction cost. So 47 pounds and 12 pence has been added on to the value basically because that is no longer something I'm gonna be selling in this series. Now we've got those little bits out of the way, let's get on with the numbers of actually how we performed in this month. So this month, I spent a total of 915 pounds and 83 pence at auctions. So that was again the same as last month, three auctions that I visited, but one big auction at the end there, which I'm not entirely sure I gave the full figure for, but that set me back 680 pounds and 31 pence. Now we had sales of 1,218 pounds and 31 pence this month. Fees of £177.78, 
and postage costs of £76.43. Meaning we scraped in this month with a small bit of profit of £48.27. Bringing the total overall profit so far during the series to £789 on the dot. Now obviously that's not really anything to write home about. It's not a very very profitable month. But it doesn't really help that only 7 days ago I spent over £680 at an auction. These times are going to come with the auctions. Obviously you're spending quite big at times. And it is going to make a big old dent in that profit. But you've got to spend to make money when it comes to the auctions. There is still over £3,200 worth of listings with the auction hunting custom SKU that I have got assigned to them all. So we've got loads and loads of products still there to sell, which hopefully, fingers crossed, will be going through soon. Moving forward into episode four, I'm not too sure how it's going to look, how many auctions I'm going to be able to get to because we're heading into Christmas season. Obviously, the shop's going to be shut down for a little bit. I'm not really going to be working too hard pretty much from now until the end of the year, which is roughly half of the month. And then when January starts, then I'll be getting stuck back into the auctions again and hunting around to see what profitable items we can find. Also, to add to that, we have now reached the full three months of when I started this series, meaning I wanna start getting rid of some of the stock that I still have that has reached that time. We've got things like the time recorder I picked up in month one. I've still got it, so we need to be seeing that gone now by the end of next month. We've still got the Harman Kardon amp. There's not really that many cameras left, but there are a few from that first month. So again, might be bundling those up and getting those rid on an auction in January. And I think that's pretty much what we've got left from month one. So there's a few little loose ends that I want to be making sure are gone. We don't want to be having this stuff more than three months. But that's about it. I'm not going to be doing the per hour this month because obviously I've just spent a huge amount of money at an auction. It skews it a little bit. I think probably that's not really going to be worthwhile doing every month until maybe four, five, six months time when we've got a real stash behind us. We know what's being sold. We know what's being purchased and we've got a bit of a better scale as to where we are. So there we are then. That is episode three done with three months in. We're just shy of £800 profit. We've got about over £3,000 worth of stock listed and we're on a nice route to some profitable auction hunting. Hope you've enjoyed the series so far and enjoyed this episode. If you have, please smash that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more reselling content and auction content going forward. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.